So, Quaternions. You may have heard about them um, as, a, as a nice way of handling rotations, but, um, I mean, what are they? So, to start with, I want to do a motivation, come up with a motivating example. I've taken just a, an early video from my Pi OpenGL series, and I've added in some controls for spinning around a cube. So, by clicking various uh, number keys, I rotate it around its axes. So, if I go one or two, it will tilt it around the, uh, I guess this is around the y-axis maybe, and then three and four will tilt it another way, five and six will tilt it another way. Now let's have a look at this. Let's say we want to spin our cube around the uh, horizontal axis and then apply another sort of rotation. This looks pretty good, right? Well, it turns out that the order of rotations really, really matters. Let's do this again. And instead, we'll tilt it first. Actually, I'll bring it back the other way, just so it's, it's nice and visible. So, I want to spin this around in the um, horizontal. Whoops. But as you can see, this is not spinning it in the horizontal. It is spinning it around the object's local axis, which has rotated along with the object. So I have seen some students do some clever tricks to track how the axis gets rotated and apply sort of the inverse to that axis to make sure that the axis doesn't move along with the object. But um, yeah, and, and I myself have also come into cases where I've had to switch away from this. Where are we? Down here, getting this multiplication from the Eulers. I've run into situations where I've had to go away from this function and go to the individual axis rotations and be very careful about um, the order in which they're applied. But um, this is not good. It's not predictable. It's not good. So in general, the phenomenon where the axis of rotation moves along with the object is known as gimbal lock. And um, I mean, it's not good. So for my motivating example, one thing we can do is we can, there we go. We can create a four by four rotation matrix from a quaternion object and a quaternion object can be created from an Euler's object. There we go. Okay, so I'll just fire that up. And now I apply a transformation and then I spin this around in the horizontal plane and it does actually spin around in the horizontal plane. So this is the benefit of quaternions is that the axis of rotation does not change along with the object. All right, so in order to dig more into what quaternions are, how they work, it's a little messy. There's a few mathematical details, but really important way to think about it is to look at um, complex numbers. So let me just write uh, Z, and oh, maybe not Z, it's not a good, <laughs> uh, let's go, uh, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to call this um, Q. Um, let's say that Q is a complex number and it's unitary. So it has norm of one. It can be represented as cos theta plus I sine theta. And you may be aware that when we take various complex numbers 
and we multiply them together, that corresponds to um, rotating. So if I were to take this and multiply it with another complex number of magnitude 1, I would be taking that vector and rotating it by whatever angle the other number represented. Um, but let's take a point, which I'll just call, um, it'll be a complex number as well, so A plus B I, and I'll rotate them together. And if we look in here, we'll take um, A times, so for the real part, for the real part, we'll have A times cos theta, and then we'll have I squared, so negative 1, times um, B times sine theta. So that's the real part, and then for the imaginary part, we'll have um, A sine theta plus Okay, but everything has an analogy, right? Because this a plus bi is a complex number, but it has two components. So it's basically a, a, a cent, uh, what am I thinking? It's isomorphic to a two-dimensional vector. So then if we were to say, well, um, the, the real axis is sort of isomorphic to x, and the imaginary axis is sort of isomorphic to y, then this result, we know that multiplication by complex numbers represents rotation. The result is a vector. So if we were to write this in matrix form, we have, uh, what is it? Something times a plus something times b. So then if we look at the real component of that, it's cos theta times a and negative sine theta times b. And then, um, yeah, sine theta times a and cos theta times b. But then if we look at this, as expected, this is the standard matrix for rotation, right? rotation by the angle theta. And so we can see that, um, well, a, a number of things. Firstly, we can, we can verify that um, rotating, uh, sorry, multiplying complex numbers corresponds to rotating by an angle. And secondly, we can see sort of a hint of how we can take how we can take um, complex numbers and put them into vector form and how we can go from a multiplication back to a matrix form. So as for quaternions, um, they're a weird sort of mathematical structure. They're not actually that weird. Um, here's the analogy. So we'll put Q for quaternion and before we had a real part plus a complex part. Um, now I'll add a real part plus three um, independent orthogonal complex parts. So we'll have x times i plus um, y, j plus z, k. Okay, and all of these are just, you know, real coefficients. Now, we have also the fact that i squared typically is negative 1, but same goes for j squared, same goes for k squared, and as it turns out by convention, i, j, k as well. So those are what we're working with. Um, it might be useful to represent this as an ordered pair, so we could say, okay, we have a real part and then some sort of vector where that vector is storing the x, y, 
Z components. All right, so that being the case, the, the next question is, what is the quaternion um, equivalent of this rotation uh, structure here? So a naive approach would be to say, okay, well, let's try, if we want to um, rotate around some axis, um, which we'll call V by some angle theta, a completely reasonable uh, first approach would be to take cosine theta as the real component and then sine theta times that axis of rotation. But it turns out that, yes, this does. So if we take um, Q and apply it to P, this does rotate it around by the axis of theta, but then it also modifies the it modifies the um, the length, the norm of that of that point, which isn't so good. So what we do instead is we multiply. We also multiply by the um, conjugate of um, of Q, and then what we get is, and this is where I'm sort of being a little hazy on the details. Because they're not they're not super important. I mean they are, but they come down to a lot of um, messy multiplications and things. But what we really need to know is if we take cosine of theta on two and then sine theta on two times the axis. Now the reason it's a half is because we're actually doing two multiple uh, two rotations, two multiplications. So that's why we have that. And yeah, so I'll just flip over. I will be linking this in the description, although as you can see here, it's not a secure website. So visit at your own risk. Unfortunately, a lot of good websites are not secure, but um, in this website here, they go through the multiplication and then they get down to a pretty similar form to what we got for our um, for our previous example with the complex numbers. So given this Q of cosine theta on two, sine theta on two V, the question is how do we turn that, how do we generate a four by four matrix from that? And as you can see here, if you go through, or wade through the mud and get all of these components down, then just like in the complex case, you take the coefficients of each of these and pop them into their individual bits. So to take this back, we have that um, the goal is to get the transformed x, y, and z coordinates. And as you can see here, this is um, this uh, 1 minus 2y squared minus 2z squared times the incoming x coordinate and then plus 2xy minus 2sz times the y coordinate and in this case s is the real component of the um, of the of the quaternion And then we have this 2xz plus 2sy times the z component. And as you can see so far, this is, um, what is it? It's three by three. So we'll just make it four by four by just adding, you know, plus zero times one, zero times one, zero times one. Yeah, so then following on from that pattern, you can see how we would fill in the other rows. And yeah, that is the general formula for getting a 4x4 rotation matrix around an arbitrary axis by an arbitrary um, angle.